for those of you who love to take notes, this morning's message is entitled Preparing for War. Look to your neighbor and say, we're preparing for war. If you have your Bibles, we're going to get into it. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. The book of Ephesians, I think, is probably my favorite book out of the entire Bible. My first, the first book that I really love reading over and over again every year, especially in January when, when I start my new year. This is what the Apostle Paul is talking. Um, uh, a little bit of context, he's in jail when he's writing this scripture. He's actually chained up to another guard <laughs> while he's writing this on papyrus or some kind of paper. And can you, someone shout, he's in jail, he's chained up, and he's right beside a guard. And this is what he writes. I love this. A final word. <laughs> while he's in jail, chained up, this is what he says. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Come on, somebody. He's not saying be strong in the Lord in a worship service like this. <laughs> He's not saying be strong in the Lord and Pastor Blake or Pastor David or Pastor Dylan is giving a prophetic word. No, he's chained up, isolated all alone. Family and friends gone. All, no one near him to give him a spiritual pep talk or a prophetic word. And he's like, you know what? Be strong in the Lord, people. I'm not just preaching to myself. I'm, I'm, I'm here preaching to 8211 White Horse Road, College Park Church. Be strong in the Lord. In his mighty power. And I love this. This is where it gets really good and very detailed. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Don't put on some of the armor. Put on how much of it? All. And when you put on all of God's armor, you will be able to stand firm against all of Satan's strategies. Someone give God praise this morning if you believe his word. You'll be able to, if you put on all of my armor, you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of Satan. Verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece, someone shout every piece, don't put on some of it. Just don't memorize a little of it. Just don't get to a place where you can just rehearse what you heard in Sunday school about it. No, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Oh, my gosh. So there's essentially, he's saying there's an enemy that's going to attack you Attack your family, attack your friends, attack your finances, attack your faith, attack your mentality. Anybody experience an enemy attack you in any kind of way? He says, there is a way where you can be positioned in the Lord and in the power of his might when you put on the whole armor where you can stand firm against him, not shaken. Woo! Not beat down, <laughs> but strong in the Lord. He says, verse 14, stand your ground. I want to get to the end of the message already. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness. Verse 50, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Verse 16, in addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Verse 17, put on salvation, the helmet of salvation as a helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times. And on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. How many of you believe God's Word to be true, alive, and active to go before us right now and build God's kingdom? Amen? Look to your neighbor and say, preparing for war. Look to your other neighbor and say, are you preparing for war? Will you bow your head and close your eyes as we pray, as we prepare further? God, I thank you for your word. Oh, I thank you, God, for your great peace that's in this room where we can put on a smile and laugh at the enemy who has tried to lie against us for so long this week that we are who we used to be. Devil, you are a liar. <laughs> and we smile facing you right now. <laughs> we win <laughs> because if God be for us, 
Church, help me finish it. Who can be against us? If you believe that, someone shout amen. amen. Before we prepare for war, we got to realize that there is an enemy that we are fighting against. The devil is a real being. We have a real adversary. Someone shout, I have a real enemy. The Bible lets us know this in Ephesians 6 that, you know, that there is this being, his name is Satan, and he is warring against you and I today. Now, that's some, some, some of you hardcore Pentecostal saints are like, why are you talking about this? Because we're living in a world where the church ain't talking about Satan and that we serve an enemy or that we have an enemy, that we have an adversary, and his name is the devil. Who is the devil? I want to give you three things in regards to who the devil is. Number one, he is strategic. Satan is incredibly strategic. Why is he incredibly strategic? He's patient. He can plant a seed in Mark Wagner at the age of seven in the, in the area of pornography that would grow and try to destroy him at the age of 32, 34, and 35 in regards to his faith and family. He's patient. He'll wait. He'll plant something in your life, a moment of defeat, of anguish that you experienced because someone manipulated you, someone took advantage of you, someone physically, mentally abused you, and I can allow and it will wait because of what happened at two, three, seven, eight years old, and be patient for that seed to come out when you're 30, 40, 50. And whereas as a child, you were so open. As a child, you were so trusting. As a child, you were so giving. But because of the manipulation and the strategic patience of the enemy, he destroyed you. He did, he, and he continually, continually does what the Bible lets us know. He is there. He is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Someone shout, he is strategic. I'm not here to talk about and give glory about Satan. I'm here to let you know you serve a real enemy. Not only is he strategic, but he is spiritual. Can we go there this morning? The Bible lets us know in Ephesians 6, 12 that, you know, there are, there are spiritual wickedness. Someone shout wicked. There is spiritual wickedness in high places. The reason why we got to understand this is because not everything that is spiritual is good. Some things that are spiritual are wicked. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, don't believe every spirit, but try the spirit to see if it is of God. Just because they put the label God on it doesn't mean it's godly. Just because they put the name Jesus at the end of it doesn't mean it's of heaven. Because not everything is spiritual goodness. Things like witchcraft, Ouija board, horoscopes, tarot cards, Hindu mysticism. Some people have a religion in regards to crystals. And they put crystals in their room. They're like, well, these things work. It works, but it ain't spiritual goodness. It's spiritual wickedness. Yes, it might give you peace for a little bit. Yeah, it might sustain you in for a moment. The Bible says sin is, feels good for a moment, <laughs> but in the end, what church? It brings destruction because not everything that is spiritual is of God because Satan is spiritual, but he's spiritual wicked. Pastor Mark, it works. The next time someone lets you, tells you, well, tarot card works, and these crystals in my room works, and all these other things work, let them know, yeah, I know it works, but it's what, church? It's wicked. He's strategic. He's spiritual. Number three, he is strong. Let's just be honest. I'm not saying he's stronger than God. I'm just saying Satan, in his own self, is strong. But, someone shout, but. But only if you fight him in the flesh. <laughs> but if you fight him in the spirit, you win. Mm. We, someone shout, we win. Someone needs to get this deep in your soul. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of 
strongholds. There are spiritual strongholds that the enemy is encamping around your mind, around your life, around your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your spouse, your husband. There is a spiritual giant called Satan who is strong. But if you arm yourselves with the weapons that are not carnal but are mighty through God, someone shout, I win. I win. Mark chapter 9 verse 29 says this. You know, there was, we talked about it a little bit last week, that there was um, some disciples, and they're trying to rebuke this demon out of this person, and they couldn't do it. And they come to Jesus. Jesus speaks the word. The demon comes out. Notice, when Jesus did any miracle, he doesn't stay there for one hour doing some type of exorcism. Jesus, Jesus isn't just you know, pushing them on the floor, trying to make them be slain in the spirit. Jesus speaks a, a peaceful word. Jesus speaks a calm word. In fact, the Bible lets us know that when Jesus is in the middle of a storm and all the disciples are franicking and panicking and they're thinking they're going to die, Jesus is asleep in the boat because when there is trouble, you know how Jesus prepares for trouble? He gets a pillow and he goes to sleep in the middle of it all. Because that is our Father. He ain't shaken by storm. He ain't shaken by the world. He ain't shaken by a strong demon. No, he realizes, you know what? When you are connected to me, you win. And the Bible says when he got on that boat and he spoke to the storm, he said, peace be still. He didn't shout it. He didn't scream it. He didn't spit all over the place about it. He didn't get oil and all this and just anoint the entire boat. He said, peace be still. Why? Because he understood who he is in the Lord. Someone shout, I know who I am. I know for some of us, it's hard for us to really say that because we don't really know who we are. But after this morning's message, you're going to know who you are. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 9, 29, when they couldn't get this demon out of this person, Jesus did it. And this is what Jesus says in Mark 9, 29. This comes out only by praying and fasting because there are certain things that spiritually you will never overcome until you not only pray, but you fast. I'm only going to get about three amens in the house this morning. I, it's going to be a tough crowd. I can't wait till this message is over. I'm about to go on vacation. So I'm going to bruise you and I'm going to move on. Amen. <laughs> and so, number one, he's strategic. Number two, he's spiritual. Number three, he's strong. But number four is the most important. He's defeated. Someone shout, he's defeated. For those of you who don't know your Bible, you need to get 1 John 4, 4 deep in your mind, deep in your soul, and deep in your spirit. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says this, Dear children, you are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Woo! Come on, somebody. We just need a praise break right there. And for all you who believe, greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. Can I get just five people to stand on your feet and give God praise? I, God is on my side. God is my victory. God is my defender. And because God is for me, who can be against me? Because if he is in me, greater is he that is in me than he is that is in the world. Before you make yourself to be seated, high five two people and say, he's defeated. He's defeated. He's defeated. Amen. So we talked about who is Satan. Let's talk about what we do to fight Satan. Are you ready? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 says this, put on all of God's armor so you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. I love it. Put on all of God's armor that you will be able to stand firm. He didn't notice, he doesn't say punch the devil. He doesn't say Chuck Norris roundhouse kick the devil. He doesn't say just do some practical joke against the devil. All he says is just stand firm. Someone shout, just stand. But when you stand, put on all the armor. Just don't put on some of it. Put on all of it. Someone shout all of it. The first thing that he talks about in regards to all of it is this. He talks about the belt of truth. The belt of truth represents the believers. I want to break this down further. Integrity. The belt of truth rep represents the believer's integrity. Do you understand? Satan trembles when we live with integrity. 
Satan gets nervous when men and women of, uh, of College Park Church live and p- by putting on the belt of truth, by living in and taking. So how does Satan fight against truth? He combats it with lies. Can we, go, can we take this further, church? He wants you to give up your integrity. He wants you to compromise your integrity. He wants you to sell your integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is like character. It's what you do behind closed doors when no one's looking. What are you doing then? I, what do you do when what you prayed for is taken away from you? What are you willing to do to get it back? I'm, I'm about to be in, incredibly vulnerable. Some people might not want me to pass through them no more next week after I tell them what happened last week. You know, my son, um, for, for his birthday, like, he doesn't want video games. He doesn't want Nintendo Switch or PlayStation. This guy wants a $100 fishing rod, Big Eddie. That's what my son wants. He, <laughs> he, if you talk to Judah, he wants anything Shimano. If you talk to Gavin, he wants anything lose. That's what my boys want. And so my son saved up his money and got a $99 fishing rod from Calyx Outdoors. The problem, though, was um, th- that week leading up to last week, about two weeks ago, he broke it by shutting the door on it and broke the tip. I ain't never seen my son cry that much in my entire life. Like, literally, it was bad. And so me, as a good father, I'm doing whatever I can to help this boy get back on his feet, stop having this emotional drama roller coaster going on in his life, and get some freedom and Jesus back in there. You know what I'm saying? And so I remember people telling me, you know, well, you know, I don't know about Calyx, but I know Academy, they have one of the greatest warranties. If you buy something, break it, return it, they'll actually exchange it. I said, what? And so what did I end up doing? I, I took that rod. I ended up taking, taking it to Academy, and they ended up exchanging it. No questions asked, even though I bought it from another store. But, but there's a caveat. Gavin was like, Daddy, you lied. That happened on Saturday. And so Sunday, before the message, I'm praying. I I get here around, I try to get here as early as 6, as late as as 7.30, and I was praying, and I couldn't pray. Holy Spirit wouldn't speak to me other than this one thing. Before you pray to me, take care of this. (laughs) I was crying like crazy. I called my wife. I was like, get Judah, Gavin, and Grace on the phone. Daddy was wrong with what I did. I did not live with integrity. And so, Gracie, what are you going to do next? We're going to go to academy, and I'm going to tell them I was wrong. And whatever the repercussions, I'm going to take it because I want to be a man of integrity. You, you don't, I say that easily. You don't realize how hard, how hard my heart was beaten to be honest and transparent with, with my children. You don't realize how hard it was. I'm just trying to be real with you. Is that okay? And, and, great. And so we're talking to make the long story short. Gracie goes, what if, they, what if you go to jail? <laughs> but she was dead serious. I said, if they put me in jail, then I deserve it. But I will be a person that lives with integrity. It's not about, and this is the principle that I didn't realize that God was teaching me, teaching my children through me. It doesn't matter what they do to me. It's about li- living with integrity. It's about putting on the belt of truth. And I will not allow the enemy to allow lies to come through my life. I refuse. I refuse. What are you saying, Pastor Mark? Some of you may have never made a lie, but if you did, the Bible says before you put your sacrifice at the altar, make restitution with the person you have an issue with. That's kingdom principle. That's Experience, that, that's obeying the Lord through physical obedience because some miracles only come through what? Physical obedience. I don't want to live in regards to my kids thinking I'm a great man. I want to live before God. God said, Mark is a great man, and he is a man who has put on the belt of truth, a man that will live with integrity. Number, the second thing he tells us to put on, he tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. 
The breastplate of righteousness represents the believer's purity. Someone shout purity. He wants a body to live pure in mind, pure in heart, pure in actions, pure in deeds in their life. How does Satan fight righteousness? How does Satan fight our purity? Through lust. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But God's word lets us know in Matthew 5, 8, God blesses those whose hearts are pure. And the Bible says they will see God. How many of you want to see God in troubled times? How many of you want to experience God in the midst of conflict? How many of you want to see God right now in the midst of COVID-19, isolation, face masks? The Bible says those who have a pure heart, who put on the breastplate of righteousness, they'll see me. Because blessed are they who have a pure heart. That's why we got to guard our heart. We got to guard our integrity. We got to guard our, someone shout, guard integrity. Guard purity. Why is it so important, Pastor Mark, that we guard these areas of our life? Because Proverbs 4, 23 says this, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. For those of you who love tattoos, you better just tattoo that on your arm right there. Guard your heart because everything you do flows from it. It's when we get to a place where we don't put on the belt of truth. We don't put on the breastplate of righteousness that the enemy can attack our heart. The enemy can attack our integrity. The enemy can attack our purity. The enemy can implant lies that we activate and we make decisions and choices based on them because we have failed to guard our heart. Matthew 6, 22 says this, the eye. Someone shout, my eye is the lamp of the body. Repeat after me. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Man, we can just end service right here with just these three scriptures. It's going to take us forever just to learn these right here. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says if your eye is good, your whole body will be good. Maybe the reason why things aren't going good in your life is because your eye ain't good right now in what you're looking at. The things you're watching, the things you're viewing, the things you're meditating on, the things you're focusing on aren't good. The the, the perspective you're looking at, the perspective you're rehearsing over and over again isn't good. And the Bible says put on the belt of truth, put on the, the breastplate of righteousness. And when you do this, you'll walk in integrity. You'll walk in purity. Anybody want to walk in integrity and purity today, make some noise for God, for heaven to hear this morning. Amen. But are you guarding your eyes? Are you guarding what you watch? Are you, see, that's the thing, that's what I love about fasting. Because fasting doesn't get us more of God. Fasting gives God more of us. And that's why we fast. It's not because we're trying to manipulate God to give us something. No, we're trying to beat our body into subjection, Paul says, to give our body back to Christ. And we're going to do that August 2nd through August 22nd. I know I've heard some of you already, God convicted you last week, and you're already starting your fast now, and you want to, and you started last week, and you're going into August 22nd. That's totally all right. It's up to us to be able to hear from God, walk in physical obedience, to be able to see miracles manifested in our life. And I don't know about you, but 2020 is going to be the year of the greatest miracles we ever encounter at College Park Church. Amen. How can you say that? Because God said, I can guarantee you victory if you put on the whole armor. First, you put on the belt of truth. Second, you put on the breastplate of righteousness. Third, he says, put on, before you go out, slip on the shoes of faith or the shoes of peace. Before you walk out of your house, don't walk out with your mentality all jacked up. Don't walk out with your mind all messed up. The the shoes of peace represent the believer's tranquility. The shoes of peace represents the believer's tranquility. For those of you note takers, please write this down. I think they're going to put it up on the board. Peace is not the absence of problems. Peace is the addition of the Holy Spirit power in the midst of all of that stuff going on in your life. I need need you people of faith to give me some amens. Nod your head. Let me know you're with me this morning, all right? How many of you experienced the peace that surpasses all understanding and makes some noise in this place? My God, time is flying by. The fourth thing we need to put on is the shield of faith. The shield of faith represents the believer's certainty. Someone someone, Someone shout, I'm certain who God is. 
Look to your neighbor and say, I'm certain who I am in God. Are you certain? The Bible lets us know. Pick up the shield of faith. It represents the believer's certainty. So there is Paul. He's in jail. He's chained up to a guard, and he sees. And when I was studying this in regards to a Roman official or a, a Roman soldier's shield, it's about anywhere from four feet high, two feet wide, made of brass with a cover with a leather covering. And so he's saying, you know what? When you pick it up, you're not having to pick up a lot of it. It's so big already. If you just pick it, it'll cover you. And he says, you don't have to pick up something small and take so much strength in order to lift it up. It's so big that if you lift it, it'll cover you already. Almost what David said, what Jesus said, mustard seed faith, you can move mountains. Mustard seed faith, you can speak to this mountain, be removed, and it is removed. How many of you want to see mountains moved in 2020? Make some noise. How do we do that? By activating, lifting up. Someone shout, lift up the shield of faith. So how does Satan fight against us when we lift up the shield of faith? The Bible says in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, the spiritual wicked one. What are darts? Darts, in essence, are doubts. Doubts. Where the enemy will try to hit you with doubts of who you are. No, no, you're not saved. No, 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 you're still a lesbian. You're still a homosexual. You're still a drug addict. You're still a thief. You're still a womanizer. You're still an adulterer. This is who you are. And so what does the Bible say in order to combat the lies of the enemy that are trying to attack you left and right? What does God's word say in order to be able to stop the lies of the enemy to infiltrate our mind that are fiery, the Bible says? Why is it, why is it fiery? It's a fiery dart. A fiery dart is a little tiny fire, but if it can touch something, it can explode something. And so the Bible is saying, pick up your faith. Be certain in who you are. Be certain in what God has said. More importantly, be certain in what God has done. Has anybody, been, has anybody experienced the salvation of the Lord in this place? Has anybody been set free from sin? Has anybody ever experienced the salvation of the Lord in your life? Come on. How about you be certain? Pick up your faith. I'm not who I used to be. I am who God has called me to be. I am a world changer. I am a planet shaker. I am, someone said, I am a miracle maker. Not because of who I am, but because I have the whole armor of God on, I win. So wherever you go in, you can have victory. Wherever you go to, you can experience prosperity. Not prosperity, just the money. I'm talking about prosperity where God increases in every area of our lives. How many of you want God to increase in your life? The Bible says, then put on the whole armor of God. Someone shout, put it all on. See, some of us are professionals at one or two of them. But then we lack, we lack in other areas. I almost want to abuse both hands. I'm getting so excited this morning. But then there are other areas where we really are weak and, more importantly, we neglect. So he says, put on the belt of truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the shoes of faith. Put on the shield or put on the shoes of peace. Put on the shield of faith. But this, I love this. I love this. I love this. Number five, put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation. Someone shout, put on. The helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation represents the believer's sanity and mentality. <laughs> it represents what goes on here in your mind. And how do we combat all the crazy confusion that's going on in this head? <laughs> how, do, how do we stop the enemy attacking our mind? You know, what does God's word say? Not Mark. Not so, no, not Pastor Mark's opinion. What does God's word say? He says, put on the helmet of salvation. Remember, I've saved you. And whom the Son sets free. Oh, oh, you read your Bible too. Hello. The Bible says, you know, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are what? Oh, are, are, do you, I know you know it, but do you believe it? Do you believe it when you go into work? 
Do you believe it when you come home? Do you believe it when you're raising your children? Uh-uh, 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 devil. I'm putting on the helmet of salvation. I got my mind right. My mind's made up in who I am. I'm certain in who I am. I have tranquility, I have purity, and I have integrity. Why? Because I put on the whole armor of God. I ain't going to be shaken in this time. I'm not going to be broke down during this season. No, I am going to walk victorious because God is guaranteed. Someone shout, God is guaranteed victory. But have you put on the helmet of salvation? Luke 8, 35, New Living Translation says this. And he found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, saying in his right mind. This is a man who had over, he had legion in him, over, somewhere around six to 10,000 demons inside of him. He was so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. The Bible says that he was naked. He would cut himself with stones. The town couldn't deal with him. So they put him in a cave, chained him up there because he was wild. Someone shot, he was wild. He, he couldn't control his mind. Because he couldn't control his mind, he, he lived an erratic lifestyle, so much so that he lost all his friends, he lost all his families. But what happened when he put on the helmet of salvation and they found the man who the demons had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, sane in his right mind. Someone shall put on the helmet of salvation. When you put on the helmet of salvation, demons can attack you. When you put on the helmet of salvation, the enemy can't lie to you. When you put on the helmet of salvation, your faith is increased, peace is given, truth reigns, purity can be lived out. When we put on the helmet of salvation, why? Because we let the enemy know, you can't have my mind. Mm. See, some of you, you're living with family and friends, and they're telling you you're, you're a hypocrite, and you, you're going to be the same person you were last month, last year. You better put on the, I'm saved. Come on. Someone shout, I'm saved. I have his spirit, and because of that, I win. If you believe that, give God praise this morning, church. Just don't say it. Believe it. Just don't believe it. Walk it out as the enemy tries to attack you left and right. How, do, how are we guaranteed victory? When we put on the whole armor of God, we will be able to, to stand against all the strategies of Satan. Last but not least, he talks about the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit represents the believer's weaponry. It represents the believer's weaponry. Someone shout the sword of the Spirit. See, see this is, I, I have to, Mm, we're going to go there this morning. Some of us, we fight on Facebook. We fight with vain, argument, vain arguments. We, buy, we fight through gossip and slander. No, we say we're just praying about it. No, you're gossiping in your prayer about it because your prayer is so manipulative. Don't even realize it. Hello? The Bible says, how do we fight? What is our weapon? And co- number six, what is our weapon? What is our sword? The sword of the what? Not the sword of argument, not the sword of gossip, not the sword of slander, not the sword of discourse, not the sword of doubt, the sword of the what? The Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives today, church. I truly believe, according to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is Jesus' greatest gift to his church, to the body of Christ. Does anybody believe that this morning? We need, someone shall, I need the Holy Spirit. Why do we need the Holy Spirit, Sir Mark? Uh, why do we need the Holy Spirit, Pastor Mark? Because in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, Jesus walks into the wilderness. And he is confronted with Satan, who was strategic, who was spiritual, and who was strong. And Jesus is alone, doesn't have any disciples. Jesus is there. Mother is not there to give him a pep talk. Father isn't there to give him some kind of clue on how to navigate through troubled water. All Jesus does to attack the enemy, he says, let me pull out my sword, (laughs) which is the sword of the Spirit. And the Bible says that three times, someone shot three times. Three times the enemy confronts him. Three times the enemy tempts him. Three times. The enemy tried to get Jesus to compromise, give in, and come over to his side. But you know how Jesus shanked him? Jesus shanked him three times with the sword of spirit by saying, It is 
written. Now, this is how I feel. Or this is what I think. No, no, no. I know God's word. I put on the whole armor of God. Say to me, you can't lie to me. You can't put doubts at me. You can't throw anything at me because I am armed up from the toe to my head with the whole armor of God. And no matter what you say to me, you're defeated. Because it, someone shout, it is written. Jesus cut the devil three times with three words. It is written. He didn't go on Facebook and put his problems on there. He, he didn't say, you know what, here's my drama and all the things I'm going through. No, it is written. People ask me all the time, Pastor Mark, how, how do you feel about COVID-19? I don't really have any feelings towards it because I ain't focused on it. I ain't focused on it. I'm focused on the kingdom of God. I'm focusing on building the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm focused on building his kingdom. You can't distract me, Satan, because I know who I am. You can't have, people ask, why aren't you freaking out? Why aren't you bugging out? Because I know I win. I read the end of the book, church. <laughs> we are guaranteed victory. But before we experience this guarantee in our victory, there needs to be physical obedience that walks out of you and me. It's not about just giving my, see, we talked about a couple weeks ago, it's not just about getting to heaven, even though that is the end game. But it's about bringing as many people to heaven as we can with us. And every person that we bring to heaven with us, we get a crown that we can lay at Jesus' feet to let them know how much we love you, how much we gave our life. Because, Pastor Mark, I thought obedience is greater than sacrifice. Yeah, it is. But what happens when you put obedience plus sacrifice together? You get increased favor all your life. I don't know about you, but I want increased favor. So I'm going to sacrifice myself, fast for 21 days, and like Daniel, like Jesus, walk out victorious, walk out in power, walk out in freedom, walk out with the power of the Holy. The Bible says when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, when he walked out, guess what happened? He didn't walk out all defeated. The Bible says when he walked out, angels came, ministering angels came to him, Sherry. Ministering angels came to him, Cameron. Why? Because even though, even though it was a dry, barren season, even though he was alone for a little for a little while, Joseph, even though he experienced a little bit of hunger, Eric, the Bible says because he obeyed the God, his God the Father with physical obedience, ministering angels came to him. And the Bible says when he came out, he came out with power. I don't want to just come out with knowledge. I want to come out with the Holy Spirit power. Am I the only one that wants Holy Spirit power for 2020 and the rest of my life? If you want the power of the Holy Spirit more than ever before, stand to your feet as we close this morning, church. Stand to your feet. I want the power of the Holy Spirit more in my life. I want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit living in me and also live through me to impact people all around the Bible says that then there is obedience, there is some actions that need to be displayed out of your life. It's more than a thought. It's more, just, it's more than just praying in your head. It's more than just believing in your heart. The Bible says, yeah, believe in your heart, but confess with your mouth. There's physical, oh my God, even salvation has physical obedience that's needed to take place there. And so here's, the, here's, the, here's how strategic the enemy does. He, I like, he speaks into your mind half of it, but withholds the second part of it that finishes the entire work to experience miracles, signs and wonders in our, in our life. But someone shout, the devil is a liar. I don't care if everyone in this earth is bowing down. I'm not going to bow down to the patterns of this world. So how do we transform our mind? How to renew our mind through his word? Romans 12, 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you will know what his good and pleasing will is for your life. How many of you want to know what God wants for you? 
Just raise your hand. No noise. Raise your hand. Okay. August 2nd, we're going to talk more about it leading up to this. We are going to war through prayer and through fasting. Can I just say something really controversial? And the disciples that were trying to take care of that demon and couldn't, the disciples that were trying to fight that, you know, the spirit of legion in Mark chapter 9, and they, and they didn't have what it took, they were hanging out with Jesus. And it wasn't enough. They had a relationship with Jesus. And they couldn't do it. Why? Because in order to fight spiritual wickedness, there needs to be some physical obedience that's spiritual in essence. And I wonder, are there any men and women at the sound of my voice who are saying, I'm preparing for war. I'm going to pray. I'm going to praise. But I'm also going to fast. Not because of what I can get from God, but for God to have all of me. Can we give God praise for what God is going to do in 2020? Amen. Before you can even go on this journey of preparation, before you can even put on the whole armor of God, the Bible lets us know that we have to put off sin. We got to put off sin. Before we can put on the armor to fight, to stand against the enemy. See, I know some of you are excited right now. You're like, man, I can, I hear these principles in God's word, how to fight against what the enemy did to me when I was a young kid, when I was a young girl. Man, there's, there's someone in this building, you've been physically, physically raped at a young age. And God says, you're, giving, you're being freed today. You're being freed today. Why? You can be certain that I am the God that provides. I am the God that frees. That I am your victory. And I am going to be that victory today. But you got to put off sin. What is sin? It's what separates us from Jesus. It separates us. It pulls us further and further away from having intimacy with the Lord. That's why God hates sin. Because he's a pure God. How many of you know it's hot outside? I need y'all to pray for me because your pastor, I don't know how this happened. I said yes to going camping today through Wednesday. Tent camping. Say, bless him, Father, for he has sinned. Last Wednesday, it was 81 degrees at 1030 at night. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I need it to be like 67 degrees at night to go to sleep. I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, it's, 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 it's about to get hot up in here. I'm about, I'm about to sweat bullets. You know what I'm saying? The Bible, lets, I don't even know where I was going with that, man. I just, I got lost. Like, how dumb were you thinking to say yes to go on camping? That's all I can think right now. And I'm like, why would I do that? Someone say, why would you do that? I told you to pray for your pastor when I make dumb decisions. Rebuke those demons, right? You, that's why you need to pray and fast, just for your pastor, right? Because that only comes out by prayer and fasting, God's word says in Mark 9. The, l- l- hear me out. We are going to be a generation that is going to go to war like never before. But we need to be a generation that believes like no other generation believed before. A generation that walk in physical obedience like never before. A generation that takes God's word for what it is and allows this to be the only sword that we allow to attach to our life. And without that, you will always be defeated by family, friends, co-workers, customers. You'll always living, thinking about your past. You'll always allow the atmosphere of other people change the atmosphere that God wants to create inside of you. You can walk victorious in 2020 when you put on the whole armor of God, but you have to put off sin. What kind of sin are you talking about? I'm talking about the sin that is selfish, the sin that is prideful, the sin that will not be humble and hungry to be changed by him. I tell this to everyone I mentor. Two things. If you can live out these two principles all the days of your life, you'll always be used by God. You need to be hungry and humble. That's it. 
The Holy Spirit will take all your mess and create a message out of all that mess. But if you could be hungry and humble, God can teach you anything through any season. I just truly believe. Anybody know what I mean? What I mean about being hungry and humble? God can teach you. Do you realize the Bible says that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble? God will humble the prideful and exalt the, and exalt the humble. Do you want God to humble you? Woo! <laughs> Boy, that's a hot, that's a hot mess. But the Bible lets us know this. If you can just humble yourself with what you think you need to do to win. Trust me, you'll be able to walk on water in any season. How did I do that? I just trusted him. How did that happen? I just believed in him. How did all this come to pass? And they said it can never be done. God did it because I was connected to him. Nothing. And nothing more. Amen.